Hello and welcome back to another episode of Orchestra Graphics Tips and Tricks. Once again, my name is John Krajewski and today I wanted to walk you through an exercise of creating a symbol for an asset and then linking that symbol to a faceplate and then reusing that over and over with a minimal amount of effort. On the screen that I'm showing you now, I've got three symbols. Each of them are a polar star. If you're not familiar with a polar star, uh, what this is attempting to show you is I've got four key performance indicators for a piece of equipment, which are pairs of process values and set points. And if everything is lined up right on the green diamond, then I'm exactly where I need to be. If any of the values are below it, you'll see it because this black shape shows you where you currently are. What I also want to show you here in this example is that I've linked each of these to a faceplate so that when I click on the symbol, it brings up the faceplate so that I can show you the detailed values. Now, the visual representation of the symbol here being a polar star or that the values here being the process value set point pairs, this is just as an example. You should be able to do the same kind of capabilities I'll show you here with nearly any type of asset with any type of data. I was just using this as an example. So what I'm going to do is show you how to build this so you can make it very repeatable, very easy, and very fast. So I'm going to start by going over into the development tools. I'm going to come over to the Orchestra IDE, which is their development system here, and I'm going to start with an object called simulation. I'm going to go over to my derivation view. The simulation is an object that I have created which already has uh, a bunch of data on it so that I can show you real data moving. And so I'm going to create a new drive template. Think of that as a, as a new asset type. I'm going to call this my new equipment. Then I am going to double click to open my new equipment. And once it's open, what I will show you here is the fact that it comes with some things that would have been predefined. Predefined because I defined them up in this simulation object. So if I come here, you'll see there's a bunch of attributes. A bunch of attributes, these analog values, Boolean values, integers, process variables, set points. All of those are already predefined on the object. You can see because there are these inherited. So if I uncheck inherited, they go away. So they're the ones that have been, have been inherited with that root object I began with. And there's a bunch of scripts. So for example, you'll see how I've got scripts that are uh, simulating proportional control on my process variable set point pairs. You don't really need to go into that for this demo, but that's just where I'm getting my source demo, my source data. What I really want to show here is I'm going to add the graphics, the graphics that make it possible to create that symbol and the faceplate. So I'm going to start first with my polar star, polar star symbol. I'll create that. And while I'm here, I'm also going to create my faceplate. I'm going to open the polar star and edit the polar star. So from here, the Polar Star in itself, I've gotten out of the Situational Awareness Library. So if I come over here to the Graphic Toolbox, go to the Situational Awareness Library, and I go down the Polar Stars, I'm going to pick the four-spoke diamond here, and I'm going to just drop it on the screen. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to turn on the labels so they can see them. I'm going to use Substitute Strings. So come over here to Substitute Strings to swap out all those labels for KPI. So I'm going to say Label, replace that with KPI. Replace all those. OK, so now I've got those labels there replaced out. I now need to link it to data. In this particular case, that's going to be pretty simple because if I look it over on my custom properties where it says me.pv1, that already exists on my simulation object, so I don't need to do that. But here's where I would relink the process variables and set points if I needed to. In this particular case, my equipment already has a PV1, an SP1, a PV2, an SP2, so I can just leave it as is. I don't have to do anything here. I'm going to now add a little label here. And I'm just going to add this pound sign and I'm going to add a value display animation so I can see the name of the object being referenced. I'm going to look for the tag name here. And I'm going to center that guy up, put him in here in the middle. Let's go ahead and get everything centered up nicely. And I'm also going to change this to a heading text. So now I've created my symbol. Um, I just need to link it to the faceplate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to 
the symbol attributes and turn this treat as icon on. What this does is that if there were any in this base symbol, if there were any animations that would accept a click or a touch, um, by turning this treat as icon on, what I do is I, I say this is going to now happen at the top symbol level. So now that when I come in and double click and add an animation, I can add these interactive animations. Before I hit treat as icon as true, these interactive animations would have been disabled. So I'm going to add show symbol. And in this particular case, I'll just go ahead in the reference and type me. Um, me is a relative reference. Uh, so I'm looking for a faceplate on me. I'll hit the F and then faceplate comes up. I'll click in there. So I, I have gotten that done. I'm going to leave these things here defaulted. I'm going to go from modal to modeless. Modeless means that uh, I can interact with this and the background at the same time. I'm going to make it resizable. And I'm going to say, where do I want to put this thing? I'm going to put this thing below the parent symbol. So I'm going to have the pop-up come under the parent symbol or below the parent symbol. There are a lot of other options that we won't go into here, but that's just showing you the basics of how this was done. So I'm going to say OK to that. At this point, I've got everything I need to be on my symbol. I've got my name here, my polar star, and my animation on the polar star to bring up my faceplate. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close this. Now I need to create my faceplate. So I'm going to come over here to my faceplate, and I'm going to open this by double-clicking here. I'm going to use a, a graphic here from a, our symbol library, the orchestra symbol library. I'm going to go under widgets, and then I'm going to come down here and scroll down to the value display. And I'm going to drop this on the screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to substitute strings again. So I can get rid of the label, and I'm going to say label, I want that to be PV1, say OK. And I'm going to come over here to the value that I'm linking it to, and put it as me.pv1. I've done that. And now I need another one of those. So I'm going to come down here and change this. I, in that particular case, I accessed the substitute strings via the shortcut key, and which was Control L. And I'm going to go back and link this up from PV1 to PV2. I'm going to now bring up shortcut key here for linking this to PV3. And relink the data to PV3. And once more for PV4. PV4. And then relink the data to PV4. Now I've got the PVs. I need to go ahead and get set points. Uh, so I'm going to copy all of this. So I'm going to uh, sele select it all, then hold the control key down, and then just drag it over. That replaces everything. I'm going to bring up all those and find and replace the strings. So I'm going to take from all the PVs and replace those with SPs. I'll replace all there. And then I'm going to substitute the references, and I'm going to take all of the PVs and replace those with SPs. And now I'm going to do some quick rearranging so that this will be easier to read. So I'm going to pair up PV1 and SP1. I'm going to put PV2 under that with a little bit of spacing. Pair that up with SP2. Take PV3 there, a little bit of spacing. Pair that up with SP3. And one more time for the fourth element there. I'm also going to add an indicator here so I know what the name is, so I'm going to come over here, add another, I'm going to add another piece of text. I'm going to set it as heading, and I am going to add an animation to that, so that it is the value display. So let's see, edit animations, come over here to value display name. I'm going to choose tag name, I'll say OK, and just to kind of give this a little bit of space and depth here, I'm going to add a little panel behind it. So I'm going to come up behind these panels. Grab the raised panel, I'll drop that on here, send that to back. And I'll put it over here and then resize it. All of my bindings are relative here. So if I go take any one of these, you'll see they're all me dots. And so that as I create new instances, and because I've linked it to names, I don't have to come back and touch this again unless I wanted to edit it. But for, as I create new ones, I don't need to touch it. So I'm going to save and close here. So now I've created my standard. 
So for this new piece of equipment, I've already got my Polar Star and my faceplate and everything's linked. So that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, go ahead over here and to check everything in, commit my changes. I'm going to come back into this uh, screen and what I'm going to do is I am going to get rid of what's already here. Get rid of the content that's here, already here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed a new orchestra graphic. In this case, I'm going to embed from a template. So I'm going to pick over here from the template toolbox. I'm going to look for the template that I just created, which under my templates, I'm going to create for my new equipment. I'm going to pick the Polar Star. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to ask me for to name this piece of equipment that I'm using. I'm going to name it my new equipment one. Say OK. And I've got that there. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate that with Control D. Come over here. And now, actually, you know what? I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to repeat last object. That's easier. I'm going to add my new equipment two. One last one. I'm going to repeat last object again and add my new equipment three. So now I've created three pieces of equipment. Now those pieces of equipment have been created, but they're not running. So I need to go and add them into the running system. So what I'm going to come over here is I'm going to check under my new equipment where they are. And you see these little orange indicators mean that they're not running. So I'm going to deploy them to get them running. That'll make sure that those names that I had created are running, as well as the scripts that do kind of my simulation are running. So they're now up and running in the system. Now I come over to runtime and my equipment are all linked and running and if I want to access those faceplates I can just click on these individually and access those faceplates. Now this was just an example here of how I could create a piece of equipment, create a symbol for the piece of equipment, create a faceplate for that, create it once so that as I use that piece of equipment I don't have to do the animations to link the faceplates, I don't have to use the animations to link the data, I just create my assets and if I had three of them as I had here, or if I had 10 or 100 or 1,000, it wouldn't be a heck of a lot more work because I created everything as a standard up front. Hopefully, this gave you a bit more insight on how to use objects with orchestra graphics. And uh, if you'd like to add any, more, any, any comments to this, please do so down in the comments section. We hope you subscribe and watch for new videos in the future. Thank you very much.